Thanks so much, Jerome. And thank you very much for being here today. A simple sport, straightforward first left. Until in the early 90s, I was a speed skater. I, preparing for the most important event of my life, it was the 1994 Lillehammer Olympic Games. Until then, I lived a sheltered life in Norway. I've taken focus as a speed skater, I've taken the opportunities offered to me for granted. But in 93, just before the Olympics, I had a chance to travel as an Olympic aid ambassador to Eritrea, a country on the African horn, ravaged by 30 years of civil war. That trip changed my life. I was accustomed to training up to eight hours a day, uh, more or less seven days a week. And when I arrived in Eritrea, I brought the training equipment I needed. My bike, training shoes and clothes. But looking around, I realized quickly that people in Eritrea needed more significant things. They needed schools, health clinics and clean water. That was an eye-opening experience. One day, I met a group of boys. One was particularly popular, and I asked him, why? And he looked at me and laughed and said, can't you see I have long sleeves? That was confusing, and I was like, can you show me? And he showed me and took off his shirt, bounced it together, the sleeves tied it up into a ball. He was popular because his shirt was the ball the boys played football with. I asked if they ever had a real ball, had a coach, or were playing on a team. Things I took for granted. And they all said no. And they looked at me as I was from a different planet. That trip changed my life, and it gave me more than I would ever be able to give back. I came as a different athlete home. I had a sharper focus. I trained even harder because I had a purpose, those children, and it helped me win. Since 1994, I've worked so every child can have the opportunity to play and benefit from play, because I believe in the power of play to change lives. In 2000, I formed Right to Play. Today, we have an organization working with over one million children in weekly, regular activities. We are operating in over 20 countries around the world. Through education and power through play, it can change the world. It's a big and bold statement, I say, but then again, I've been bold before. And I say it because of my 20 years' experience of play's influence and what it can do. Because play can transform education. In 2007, we partnered with seven primary schools in Kivubu municipality in Rwanda. At the time, only 40% of the students graduated in the primary after seven years of school. Of those who did, they scored an average of 46% on the national standardized exit test. Teachers were at a loss. They had over 70 students in the class, and the, at the best they can do was to stand in front of the blackboard and literally teach children how to repeat and memorize. As you can imagine, they were unmotivated. They left school even without learning how to read and write. We introduced play and trained to teach us as right to play coaches. We trained them in our play based learning methodology, show them how to put the children in the center of the lessons using games as a tool, as a teaching tool, and then having children experience learning. All of a sudden, the school became fun. They were motivated to attend, and learning improved. Seven, days, seven years later, now, as we see it, 
96% of students in those same schools are graduating from primary education. And they score an average of 86% on the exit exam. One key to these methods is a conversation the coaches have with the children. It's called Reflect, Connect, Apply. This is where we relate the lessons to their own lives of the children. So we ask them, reflect on how it was to play that game. Connect those experiences with the experience in their own lives and apply those lessons to their daily challenges. These lessons become critical of kind of building the learning in the child and building the trust with the coaches. It's important because teaching lessons through games can literally save lives. Consider this. Young people between 15 and 24 year olds are responsible for almost 40% of new HIV infections globally. Roughly 65% of those young people infected are females. That statistics might not be so surprising if you know that a country like Ghana only 25% of girls know how to protect themselves from HIV-AIDS. Why is that number so low? I mean, facts about HIV-AIDS have been taught in schools for years. Prevention messages have been advertised on billboards and explained in leaflets and pamphlets. So why still are so many young people being infected? Because literature and lecture don't create interactions. They can't teach about sexual pressure. They don't change behavior. But play can. Let's take a game we call HIV AIDS infection, for example. There's a group of children forming a circle, holding hands. Then we have one child going in the middle and represent the healthy body. And one stays on the outside, and there are the HIV virus. During play, the virus trying to break through the circle. The circle is the immune system to infect the healthy body. It's fun, it's very easy to play. And it very quickly, the virus has infected the body. Instead of pamphlets and billboards, the coaches use Reflect, Connect, Apply to discuss the risk of HIV-AIDS. They identify misinformation, they teach about healthy behavior, and they reinforce correct prevention knowledge. These conversations become cute. And we have other games like Condom Relay, No Means No, and Decision Times, which are teaching children critical life skills of how to use condoms correctly, empowering girls in confidence-building exercises, and educating both genders about their health, rights, and responsibilities. In Ghana, we have seen tremendous success. 96% of the participants in our program knows how to protect themselves from HIV-AIDS. When you know how to protect yourself, you can build the confidence to envision a much better future. With that confidence, you can build hope. With hope, it's the strongest reason to change harmful behavior. This is why I believe play can be such a powerful tool, because it affects us to the core. To understand this, we have to look into how we create ourselves. It's the three big elements of the circle of influence who creates who we are. Number one, the important others. There's a parents, teachers, friends who has an effect on us. Two is the experiences we have, what we do and our, our daily behavior. What we repeat becomes our habits. Our habits becomes hard to change. And three is our inner conversation. This is what we say to ourselves, factually or emotionally. This shapes our decision of what we do and our social interaction. 
For us to create behavior change, we have to step into this circle. We have to work with it. We have over 16,000 local coaches volunteered, trained in our program around the world. They, have, they are role models and create safe and supportive environments where they foster the development of essential life skills in the children and they give incredible positive habits. These coaches become our important others. The one million children in our program play games around the world. These games is from a library of thousands developed to address critical and relevant issues in their communities. The games get repeated and they're fun. This becomes our experiences. Through the influence of our coaches and the activities, the experiences, they create the self of the child. They provide the positive emotions and facts which bolster their ability to overcome challenges, set future goals and envision success. I've really seen this change to children. So meet Daphne. She's six, she started in the right to play when she was six years old in Kampala, Uganda. Her parents said she was shy and unmotivated to attend school. She was one who didn't want to participate. In 2011, she graduated from primary school. You may ask how she did on her exit exam. Well, she scored the highest in her class, in her school, and in the entire country. Her teacher said she's a role model around her peers and leaders of any. She says she's going to be the president of Uganda one day. <laughs> despite children like Daphne, despite the value we see of play every day, despite numerous of studies proving the impact, play is seen as frivolous and unimportant. But I believe in the power of play, and I want to change that. I want to change it now. So. I'll take out this ball, and we're going to play a game. It's called the World Changers. You're it. Well, we're all it. We all have a body. We had one voice, and we're holding the ball. OK, we see a circle, which is a barrier of play. Inside the circles, you have politicians and decision makers. You know, our goal is to break through that circle and convince them of the importance of play. Advocates of his right. Tell our governments that investing in play is investing in the future. Because play can transfer education. It can create leaders. And it can shape and sa create safer communities. It literally can save lives. We can all change the world. Are you ready? Ready, set, go! Mm -hmm.